New Jersey is watching, the United States is watching, and the world is watching. I fear that the blatant harassment of Mr. Soiree and activists and journalists whose only crime appears to be exercising his right to free expression is becoming symptomatic of increasingly closing political and civic space in Nigeria. The Nigerian court had twice ordered his release on bail, and the state security agencies openly defied the court order each time, leading me to conclude either that Nigeria no longer respects the rule of law, or President Buhari is woefully out of touch with what agents of his government are doing in his name. This is unacceptable in a country that calls itself a democracy. Please join us. I'm sorry, we have, we're, we have time constraints, so we started, but. This is Mrs. Opayemi Soiree. The court had twice ordered his release on bail, and the state security openly defied the court order each time, leading me to conclude that Nigeria is no longer respecting the rule of law, or President Buhari is woefully out of touch with what agents of his government are doing in his name. This is unacceptable in a country that calls itself a democracy. Freedom of the press is a fundamental pillar of democracy and an indispensable check on government overreach. Journalists who risk their lives to expose the truth should be celebrated, not incarcerated. Over 200 years ago, our founding fathers had the foresight to recognize the importance of a free press to a fledgling democracy, enshrining it in our First Amendment. Today, that importance cannot be overstated. It is unacceptable to treat the husband and father of a U.S. citizen with such blatant cruelty. So we stand here with a family who is devastated by the uncertainty that these actions have caused. Today, my office contacted our ambassador in Nigeria in an effort to obtain answers about what actions the United States is taking on the Soiree family's behalf. In the next several days, I'll continue to engage with the State Department in Washington to ascertain the impact that the rearrest of Mr. Soiree and the detention of other activists and journalists will have on our relationship with Nigeria. My hope is that the bilateral relationship we have with Nigeria will be reassessed in light of these events. Mr. Soiree needs to be free, and he needs to be free now. The rule of law must be observed, and that means he should be liberated. With that, I invite Mrs. Soiree to say a few remarks. Thank you. After over 125 days of my husband being in, in detention illegally, he was finally set free yesterday. He got to speak to myself and the children. For the first time, they got to see his eyes when they spoke to him, when we FaceTimed with him. I haven't told them yet that he was rearrested. Um, I am truly shaken to my core at what I witnessed this morning. I was woken up at 4 a.m. to see what I can only call truly outrageous and a, a gross um, disregard for the rule of law. My husband was strangled and forcefully removed from the courtroom. The judge had to run and hide for her own safety. How do I tell my children who, after 125 days, have for the very first time spoken to their dad and seen his face, that he is again in detention and he may not be coming home for Christmas? How do they understand this? And, and, and how do they, where do they go from here? How do they understand this? My, my 10-year-old, has on his Christmas list, one of the things he wants is for his dad to be home for Christmas. Christmas is only a few days away. How, what do I tell him when I leave here and get home? Uh, Mr. Suarez only seems to be having any difficulties because he's a journalist, uh, actively pursuing the right as a journalist, speaking freely about what's happening in Nigeria. He is an activist and publisher of a U.S.-based Sahara Reporters newspaper, and uh, we're going to continue to press until he's not only released, 
but he ultimately has the opportunity to leave Nigeria and be reunited with his family. We're happy to answer a couple of questions. Thank you. Ma'am, sorry for everything that's going on. Again, you said that uh, you, saw the, you saw the video of him being detained again and all. Again, what, what went through your mind when you saw this? I started physically shaking. Um, the first thing that came out of my mouth is my children. Um, how do I tell my children? I am truly afraid for his life, and at this point, I believe the only way to bring him home is with the help of the United States. And I can't say how, how grateful I am um, to not be at this alone. Um, sitting in my room this morning at 4 a.m., I truly felt helpless, but knowing that Senator Menendez is, is here supporting me and that the, he's helping to engage the U.S. government um, gives me hope that my husband will be home soon. Anyone else? Um, hi, how are you doing? Good. Um, I just have a question, maybe for you, Mr. Schroeder. Um, can you just walk me through a little bit of how did you find out about what had happened in the courtroom and, you know, and was it from different sources? Just talk a little bit about that, what you first heard about and then go from there. Sure. Um, at four in the morning, um, a really dear friend of mine called. Um, she didn't want me to wake up to the news. And um, like I said, when she told me about what happened, I started physically shaking and um, thinking about my children. I, I was uh, briefed by um, my husband's cousin, who was present in the courtroom, as well as some of his friends, as to what was happening. Um, I think what scares me the most about what happened is um, what I've heard is in the history of Nigeria, I don't think that the secret, um, the DSS has gone into a courtroom armed with weapons, masked, and put not only the life of my husband at risk, but the life of many lawyers as well as the judge who also works for, for the government. So it, again, it is, um, uh, a show of lawlessness, a show that the rule of law is not being followed here and not being respected. And the not only did his lawyer speak out against what was happening, the judge also spoke out against what was um, happening in the courtroom today. And like I said, I, I truly am afraid for, for his life. The judge asked any commented while the arrest or after the arrest took place? At the very beginning, the judge did comment on what was happening and um, and, and talk, spoke about this is not the place or time. And again, she gave them 24 hours to the point that um, Senator Menendez made a second ago. Um, they have detained him for over 125 days on two separate occasions, once on September 24th and then on October 4th. Judges have ordered his release, and the Nigerian government has ignored those um, uh, and has been in clear violation of the orders for him to be released. So, after giving them 24 hours, they let him out for 12 hours and then rearrest him when the, the court was adjourned to February. That's scary. That's really scary that they would do that with guns and mess and choke him and physically hurt him um, right there with cameras going and. And, and people watching in front of a court, a, a, a judge, um, I, it, it just, again, shakes me to my core. Anyone else? Did you find out what charges they slapped on him? New ones? Are they still, they still haven't said anything? Well, my understanding is not a question of new charges, a question that the state security came in and intervened in a judicial process which had liberated him and physically, through a chokehold, uh, dragged him off. Uh, this is in violation not only of the rule of law uh, and of the dictates of the court, it's in violation uh, of the basic elements of human rights that we seek to observe globally uh, that are part of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, that Nigeria, I believe, is a signatory to. Uh, and so the government uh, has to intercede here and get control of its security forces. It has to ultimately uh, make sure that the dictates of the courts are observed. And if not, then there is lawlessness. So this is on, from my perspective, it's on the government uh, of Nigeria. 
uh, and its president uh, to make sure that, in fact, uh, the law is observed. He was released by court orders. He should be released. He should be out of harm's way. And we are watching. We will continue to press. And the consequences of anything happening to Mr. Suarez will be far beyond uh, any, any harm that comes to him. There will be consequences uh, in our relationship with Nigeria. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.